Good afternoon, AMVETS. You're in Reno. I'm in Salt Lake City. I really regret that I couldn't be with you all in person. Glitches in airline computers simply wouldn't allow it. But I'm very grateful to the folks of the Salt Lake City VA Medical Center for quickly offering their studio and their experts to help us meet virtually. Let me begin by congratulating AMVETS National Commander Jim Pigeon for his leadership of Team AMVETS. Jim, thank you for your long commitment to our fellow veterans. More than three decades of hard work for all of us. And most especially, thank you for your courageous service in Vietnam. Let me also acknowledge General Li Xing Zhao. Good afternoon, sir. And Director Joe Cinelli. Thank you, Joe, for AMVET's strong leadership on the Veterans First Act. AMVET's united front with other veteran service organizations is critical to Veterans First. That bipartisan omnibus bill includes many of the legislative solutions for veterans that we've been after, and nine of our top legislative priorities. So thanks, Joe, and thanks to all AMVET members. And my best wishes to Ladies Auxiliary President Kathy Burning, my fellow veterans, colleagues, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Last month, in the East Room of the White House, I watched President Obama present the Medal of Honor to the Vietnam veteran and helicopter pilot Charles Kettles. Major Kettles is one of the countless courageous American veterans who, as Lincoln most aptly described it, has borne the battle. In 1967, he volunteered to lead his flight of Hueys into the middle of a vicious firefight to carry reinforcements in and to carry the wounded out. His flight made the trip three times, but then he went back once more, alone, single ship, no air cover, overloaded with people he was trying to get out, leaking fuel, tail damaged, main rotor damaged, and windshields gone. What a man of indomitable courage, resolve, and grit. What a story of duty and of honor. These stories are powerful reminders to any who would forget. Veterans are the only ones who really know what it means to stand on that dangerous ground between freedom and tyranny. Some people miss that point but it's the heart of the matter. This time, two years ago, people who'd cut their teeth on Washington politics were asking me, why do you want to be VA secretary? I told them, there's no higher calling. There's no more noble mission making a lasting positive difference in the lives of my fellow veterans. After confirmation, my first stop was Phoenix and then Las Vegas. The next week, I met you in Memphis, and here's what I said. Coming face to face with the reality some veterans have endured isn't a disaster. It's a great opportunity, and it's a rare opportunity we can't miss, nor should we avoid it. We haven't missed it. We haven't underestimated it. We're taking full advantage of it. Across 23 cities, I consulted thousands of veterans, VA employees, other stakeholders and VSO leaders, AMVETS among them. We talked about how to shape our My VA transformation strategy so that VA would best serve veterans. I tell you this because it's important you understand. This isn't my strategy, this is yours. It's not about me, it's all about you. It reflects your ideals, your insights, and your innovations. Now you've heard many times that VA is broken. So I answer one important question. Can the Department of Veterans Affairs be fixed? Can it be transformed? And the answer is not only yes, it's absolutely yes. And it's important that you know that. Not only can it be transformed, but it is being transformed. Transformation is well underway and we're already seeing some results. Changing VA has meant changing leadership. So it's important you know that 14 of our top 17 executives are new since I became secretary. These are world-class, enthusiastic business leaders and healthcare professionals. Eight of them are veterans just like us. 
It's important you know that since early last year, our new MyVA Advisory Committee has been helping to guide this transformation. Committee members have brought extensive experience in medicine, government, veteran advocacy, customer service, and organizational change. They're veterans like us. Major General Joe Robles, President and CEO of USAA after 30 years in the Army. The 17th Gen Surgeon General of the United States, Dr. Richard Carmona, a Special Forces veteran of Vietnam. Navy veteran, Dr. Connie Mariano, the first woman to serve as White House physician to the president. Altogether, Connie's cared for three presidents and she was the first woman director of the White House Medical Unit, uh, and she's the first Filipino-American promoted to Navy Rear Admiral. Now these are innovative and respected leaders. They know business. They know customer service. They know veterans. It's important you know that we're collaborating with world-class institutions companies like Johnson & Johnson, USAA, Starbucks, organizations like NASA, Kaiser Permanente, Hospital Corporation of America, Virginia Mason, and many, and many others. We're partnered with respected organizations like the YMCA, the Elks, the PedFen Foundation, LinkedIn, Coursera, Google, Walgreens, academic institutions, and many, many more. It's important that you know over the last two years, we've helped build a new national network of 68 Community Veteran Engagement Boards, or CVEBs for short. CVEBs are local partnerships where veterans and stakeholders get together and meet, both to discuss community and VA assets. Our goal is to have 100 CVEBs across the country by the year's end. And if your community doesn't have a CVEB, let's get on it. Let us know. We'll get one. Think partnerships aren't important to veterans? Partnerships are why veteran unemployment has dropped by half in the last five years. Unemployment for post 9-11 veterans has dropped by more than 70%. To end veterans homelessness, we've been working closely with 4,000 public and private partners. We launched our 25 cities initiative in March of 2014. A few months later, First Lady Michelle Obama announced the mayor's challenge to end veterans' homelessness. Over 880 mayors, governors, county and city officials accepted the challenge. Those partnerships are why 28 communities and two states have achieved an effective end to veterans' homelessness. Those partnerships are why over 360,000 veterans and family members have been housed, rehoused, or prevented from falling into homelessness. In Los Angeles, the worst city in the nation for homelessness, we cut veteran homelessness by more than 30% last year. That's about four times the rate of the previous year's decline. Veteran homelessness nationwide is down 47% since 2010, based on the numbers the president announced in Atlanta. We've cut it in half. That means more kids are getting their moms and dads back. Rudy's combat in Iraq and Afghanistan racked him with post-traumatic stress. He ended up in jail and then homeless. Now Rudy is working on his Bachelor of Arts degree in social work. And he says life with his family is the best it's ever been. Lonnie went from serving his country to sleeping in cars. Now Lonnie has a job, he has a home, and he has hope. And because of Lonnie's success, his company is hiring other formerly homeless veterans. So all that's a product of new VA leadership, innovation, collaboration, and expanded partnerships. It's all important for you to know. Let me talk about VA healthcare. You already know VA is the largest integrated healthcare system in the country. We have a unique lifetime relationship with our 9 million patients and a single electronic health record across the entire enterprise. Nobody else offers that. Our mental health care is integrated with primary care, with specialty care, with psychosocial support to minimize barriers and help resolve problems early. Nobody else offers that. VA health care is whole veteran health care, body, mind, soul, customized to meet veteran needs. 
yoga, acupuncture, sports therapy, music therapy, writing and art therapy. We validate and embrace what works to heal veterans. And VA care is integrated with non-medical determinants of health that people often miss. I'm talking about things like education services, career transition support, pension resources, disability compensation, and many others. Nobody else offers that. Nobody. Let me talk about access to health care. You should know we're changing our system to proactive, holistic health care and wellness. It's time we get beyond just reacting to disease when it happens. You should know that more veterans are coming to VA for their care and they're waiting less time. You should know that last year, veterans had nearly 5 million more appointments than the previous year. Almost 57 million more in VA facilities and over 21 million were VA care in the community. Last March, veterans set a record for completed appointments, 5.3 million inside the VA 730,000 more than in March of 2014. Last March, veterans were issued 370,000 authorizations for care in the community, twice as much as March 2014. Those authorizations represent more than two million appointments for veterans in the months ahead. 97% of appointments are now completed within 30 days of veterans' preferred date. 91% within 14 days. 85% within seven days, and 22% are completed the very same day. You should know that average wait time for primary care around the country is five days, six days for specialty care, two days for mental health care. By the way, VA's only health care system that publicly reports on wait times as a measure of access. 90% of veterans have, we've surveyed are satisfied or completely satisfied with the timeliness of their care. We won't be satisfied until we get to 100%. And by December, you can expect same-day access in primary care and mental health care. So we're making important progress, advancing along these lines and many others. But you rarely see that in the headlines. You'd never know we lead in many fields of research that benefit all Americans, PTSD, traumatic brain injury, spinal cord injury, prosthetics, genetics. You'd never know the American Customer Satisfaction Index rated your National Cemetery Administration number one in customer service five years running. You'd never know J.D. Power rated your mail order pharmacy best in the country in customer satisfaction six years running. Not too long ago, all you heard about was our backlog, 611,000 claims more than 125 days old. You'd never know that today, the backlog is down almost 90%. And the average time waiting for a completed claim is down 65%. How we do it? We added staff, we adjusted policies, and we designed an automated claims processing system. We're eliminating bureaucracy and unproductive work, and we're encouraging innovative approaches. We're promoting best practices in healthcare and we're sharing them across the entire healthcare system. Department-wide leader training is instilling lasting change. And private sector leadership experts are teaching VA teams Lean Six Sigma and human-centered design. These are cutting edge business skills for the 21st century that are long overdue at VA. This is all the work some industrious, devoted VA employees and leaders Many veterans among them are doing. They're the ones building the high-performing, veteran-centric, customer-centric enterprise veterans deserve. But you never read about that. Listen to some people, and you'd never know there's a decent person working at the VA, veteran or otherwise. Well, these last two years, I've met and talked with thousands of VA employees in over 325 locations and 130 cities many of them veterans, just like you and me. They're people like Victor Vasquez, a groundskeeper at the Fort Bliss National Cemetery. Victor put a tree right where an older veteran wished to see one, shading his wife's grave. James Bargers, a cemetery technician at Mountain Home National Cemetery in Tennessee. One rainy day, James gave the visitor the boots right off his feet 
so she could get to her grandfather's grave. He was a World War II veteran. Kathy DeNoble is a nurse with our DC home base primary care office. A veteran Kathy serves suffers from severe PTSD. He can't get out much. So she takes him a holiday dinner every Thanksgiving and every Christmas. Chuck Malden's an emergency room nurse at Salisbury VA Medical Center in North Carolina. Chuck literally gave a veteran the shoes off his feet to help heal the veteran's blisters. Patrice, Marissa, and Grace are VA social workers in Atlanta. They didn't just house their homeless veterans, they worked on their own and reunited veteran families that have been separated for decades. Why do employees at the VA do that? Because they care. Because veterans need them. Because that's what we're about. Listen to our employees. Our employees are good people. I'm proud of them. They care about us. They want to serve us well. And we're equipping them for success. They're not all perfect, not by a long shot, but it's a gross misrepresentation to cherry pick the worst and hold them up like they represent VA employees. Just like it's a gross misrepresentation to hold up a bad veteran and say that they represent all of us. It's a distortion that sells newspapers, but it's a distortion that hurts veterans and it hurts the good people caring for them. Some claim there's no accountability at the VA. Tell that to VA, the VA employee in Augusta, Georgia, recently convicted of falsifying health care records. He's sent, facing sentencing that could include years in prison and hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines. In two years, we've terminated over 3,750 employees. And some think everything will be fine if we can only fire more people and fire them more quickly. Well, that's simply not true. We can't fire our way to excellence. In more than 33 years in the private sector, I've never encountered an organization where firing people was a measure of leadership. Now, for sure, consequences for behavior inconsistent with our values are part of effective leadership. But we won't punish people based on opinions or recycled and embellished media accounts or external political pressure. It's not in the best interest of the veterans we serve. Excellence is what we're after. So the right dialogue is about forward-looking leadership and sustainable accountability. Sustainable accountability gives you positive outcomes. It's leaders and supervisors providing routine feedback, just like we remember in well-led, well-trained military units. It's ensuring employees understand how daily work supports our mission, our values, and our strategy. It's training leaders to lead and employees to exceed expectations every single day. It's recognizing what's going well and coaching and retraining when improvements are necessary. And yes, it's taking corrective action when it's warranted and supported by evidence. These are pretty simple concepts for veterans. These same principles built the greatest fighting force in the history of the world. We all want to look back at 2016 as the year we turned the corner for veterans. And we're doing everything with what we've been given. But there are some things we can't do without the help of Congress. It's important you know the Senate Appropriations Committee approved a budget nearly equal to the President's request for 2017. The House proposed a $1.5 billion reduction. This reduction will hurt veterans and impede some critical initiatives to transform the VA into the high-performing organization you deserve. In fact, there are more than 100 legislative proposals for veterans in the President's 2017 budget. Many are absolutely vital to maintaining our ability to purchase non-VA care. But only Congress can modernize and clarify our purchase care authorities so there's a strong foundation for your access to community care in the years ahead. Only Congress can clear the way for us to streamline our care in the community systems and programs. We submitted our plan last October, but we need congressional action to execute it. 
Only Congress can enact legislation so we can better compete with the private sector and get the best medical professionals to choose to serve veterans. And only Congress can modernize the archaic appeals process. Last year, the board was adjudicating an appeal that originated 25 years ago. It had been decided already more than 27 times. Under the current law, with no significant change in resources, the number of veterans awaiting a decision will soar by 179% by 2027, from nearly 500,000 to nearly 1.3 million. So VA, AMVETS, and other veteran service organizations, the National Association of State Directors of Veterans Affairs, the National Association of County Veteran Service Officers, and other advocates shaped a simplified, streamlined, and fair appeals plan. It's your plan. The legislation costs nothing, and it will be more efficient and less costly over time. In five years, you could have appeals resolved within one year of filing. Now, we've urged ambitious action by Congress, and we need them to pass the law. The alternative? Devote more resources to the broken system and fund more employees to administer it. And you'll be waiting 10 years for a final decision on your appeal. That's unacceptable to me, and I bet it's unacceptable to you. These proposals and others require congressional action, and VSOs can make it happen. 95 years ago yesterday, VSOs made the Veterans Bureau happen. Nine years later, VSOs made the Veterans Administration happen. VSOs got us the GI Bill. You got us the Montgomery GI Bill. You got us the post 9-11 GI Bill. You're why President Reagan made VA a department, a cabinet level position, giving us all of us a seat at the table of national affairs. And you're the ones, you are the ones, who can keep veterans in control of how, when, and where they wish to be served. And that's what my VA is all about. Some have argued VA can best serve veterans by shutting down VA healthcare altogether. They argue that closing VHA is the bold transformation veterans and families need, want, and deserve. Now, I suspect that proposal serves some parties somewhere pretty well. But that's not transformational. It's more along the lines of dereliction. It doesn't serve veterans well, and it certainly doesn't sit well with me. You've heard, and you'll keep hearing, lots of recommendations for VA's future. You have to make sure there's substance to those discussions. Make sure they're about veterans' interests and veterans' needs and not something else. Make sure they're anchored to your service and your sacrifice, to that sense of duty and honor that veterans represent and only veterans understand. It's your VA, AMVETS. It's always been and it always will be. I'll close today the way I closed two years ago. Thank you, AMVETS, for your work, your commitment, and your enduring devotion to veterans. And thank you, AMVETS, for being a friend to the department. God bless you and your families. God bless veterans. And may God bless the United States of America. Thank you, and I wish I was with you.